Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about uh, doing some examples of uh, calculating a domain of convergence for power series. We're going to talk about two examples. First example will be the power series for the logarithm. So it turns out if you write this as natural log of x plus 1, it has a power series of the form n going from 1 all the way up to forever of uh, negative 1 uh, to the n um, plus 1 all over n and multiplied by x to the n. Okay. All right, so I want to know, uh, you know, what is the, uh, where is this series valid? Obviously, natural log is valid for a, a great many, uh, a great large range, uh, domain, but I want to know what, when is this valid? Okay, I want to know when is this equality valid? And so to do that, we're going to use uh, the ratio test. So we're going to use the ratio test to do this. Okay, so right there, those are the an coefficients. And we're going to write n going to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 2, uh, x to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1. And that whole expression right there, okay, the ratio test, of course, is, let me just write it over here. It's a to the n plus 1 all over a to the n in absolute value, and that's equal to L. And the idea is if L is less than 1, then the series uh, con converges absolutely. Okay, so uh, now we have to compute, we have to put down here uh, negative 1 to the n, x to the n, all over n. Take the absolute value of the whole thing. And now a bunch of stuff simplifies. That cancels, that cancels, and we get something looking like this. n over n plus 1, all multiplied. And we notice here, of course, that the, the power n cancels there, and we're left with the absolute value of x to the first power there. All right, so uh, this term, this factor right there, that goes to one as n goes big. So we're left with absolute value of x is less than one. Okay, that right there, of course, is L. Okay, um, so now we'd like to look at, uh, so that gives us one uh, interval, the interval of convergence, which is going to be negative one less than x less than 1. All right, the question then is, of course, this is for convergence, absolute convergence. All right, so what about the endpoints? So we need to look at x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 1. Uh, I want to know about that. So we know that natural log of negative 1 plus 1 is equal to the natural log of 0, and that actually does not exist. So it should be that uh, x equals negative 1 is not allowed. So let's see if we can find out. We can, I want to see if that's actually true by just plugging it into the series. So let's like check. So I'm going to put x equals negative 1 into the series. So we have the sum, negative 1 to the n plus 1 all over n, and then we have a negative 1 to the n. Um, so let's, uh, let's figure out if this works. Um, starts at n equals 1 and goes up forever. Okay, so once we get here, we have to do a little bit of work just to fiddle around with figuring out what this is. This is actually going to be negative 1. And how many exponents do we have here? We have actually 2n plus 1. So those are, what are those there actually? Those are all odd powers.
Those are all odd powers, all over n. And of course, then that means that 2n, a negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 is just equal to um, negative 1 everywhere, right? Uh, it's just a constant value. So that means we can write this as negative sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And this, of course, is a divergent uh, P series. Okay, so x equals negative 1. No, that's not allowed. Okay, so now we have to check. Uh, we have to check x is equal to 1. And that should be maybe slightly easier uh, to do. So we can go n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1. And then we have a 1 to the n all over n. I can write this as follows. And this, of course, is an alternating series. Okay, uh, and such that the 1 over n, those are uh, positive numbers. 1 over n does decay to 0, and so it converges. So, so x equals 1, well, it's allowed. So the domain of convergence What's the domain of convergence? Well, it's going to be negative 1, is not included in our interval, but that x is equal to 1 is included. So that's our final answer. And we've done a really thorough analysis to prove it. So on an exam or a quiz or any kind of homework, what I really want to see is that, uh, is, is this kind of analysis where you go through, you check the, uh, use the ratio test to check to find the initial interval of absolute convergence, and then you check the endpoints uh, to determine what those values are outside. All right, so now I'm going to do a new, a different one here. This one's just going to be uh, uh, just a slight variation of what we've already done. Nothing really much different. Just another example. N equals one to infinity. The sum. This is going to be an alternating series yet again. x minus 1 to the n is going to be our power. Then we have all over n times 2 to the n. Okay, so uh, again, these are our a n coefficients, and we're going to use the ratio test. Uh, just like we have before. So let's do that. The limit is n goes to infinity, and then we're going to take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1, x minus 1 to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1 times 2 to the n plus 1. That is all going to be over negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 uh, to the n, all over n times 2 to the n. Take that in absolute value. Now we're going to simplify. Because we have absolute values, the negative uh, alternating sign uh, factors are going to cancel. We have a common uh, set of factors of n power of x to the 1. Those are all going to cancel. And the same thing here with the 2 to the n plus 1 and the, and the 2 to the n. Those will cancel. And then we're left with uh, n over n plus 1 times, oops, we got to back up here, times 1 half, because there was an extra power of 2 on top, uh, or sorry, on the bottom. And then finally, an absolute value x minus 1 to the first power. That's all that's left there. Right, so. Uh, the only component of this that is has an n in it is this, and that's going to go, of course, to 1. So we're left with 1 half, absolute value of x minus 1. 
and that's going to be equal to my L. All right, so I want L to be less than 1 uh, for absolute convergence, which means I'm going to have a 1 half x absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1. I can modulate this a bit more, multiply the 2 over, and then what I'm going to do here is remove the absolute values and then uh, make way for the fact that everything could be negative, like so. Right now I'm going to add 1 to uh, all sides to my equation, and then that's going to get me to uh, negative 1. Is less, uh, x is less than negative, or is greater than negative 1, but it's less than 3. So that's my domain. This is, of course, the domain of absolute convergence. So this is the domain of absolute convergence. So what we want to do now is, again, check those endpoints. All right, let's check the endpoints. First endpoint we'll do is uh, x is equal to negative 1. Similar num same numbers we did last time. Let's see how it changes now. Okay, so let's do it. n is equal to 1. We're summing them all the way up. We have the negative 1 to the n power. And now we have to put in x is equal to negative 1 to everything. Negative 1 minus 1 to the n power all over 2 to the n times n. I'm going to simplify this up a little bit, just uh, straighten everything out. Going to do a little bit more work here. Uh, now I could skip a few of these steps, but I just really want to show you guys, make sure you see all of these processes uh, at work here. All right, so the 2 to the n's will cancel. And you'll see that, of course, if I have two alternating signs of the same sign, then, of course, those are also going to cancel and just give me a positive 1. So the whole, um, that whole thing right there is just going to be 1. So what I have here is n is equal to 1. We're going to sum it all the way up. It's going to be 1 over n. This, of course, is, the, is a uh, divergent Uh, P series. And so we conclude x equals 1. No, that's not allowed. It's not going to be in the domain of con uh, convergence. So now I'm going to try x is equal to 3. I want to see what's going on there. So let's do it. We have the sum n is equal to 1 up to infinity, negative 1 to the n power. And now, of course, we're going to put in 3 minus 1, all to the n, all over n, 2 to the n there. All right, I think we can see what's going to happen here. Uh, this is going to be negative 1 to the n, 2 to the n, all over n times 2 to the n. The 2 to the n's cancel, and we get a sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n. And this is an alternating uh, series. 1 over n is greater than 0. 1 over n goes to 0. Uh, and so it converges. Um, and so x equals 3, yes. So the domain a very similar outcome to the previous problem. Maybe I should have given one that was a little bit more interesting or somehow showed a different thing. But alas, what we'll write here, that is the domain of convergence right there. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this and you, uh, you learned how to do more uh, thorough analyses of convergence of series. I emphasize in my class what's really important in any math class where you have to evaluate series. It's not just the answer that's important. It's really the analytical procedure that you bring to it, how you draw upon all of the, uh, the knowledge that you have about uh, the convergence of various uh, components, 
how you utilize the tests. Just like any scientific procedure, the main objective here is that you have a good method, a sound method that utilizes the theorems uh, in your textbook that uh, codify exactly uh, uh, what converges and what does not converge for sequences and series.